Okay, I'm going to get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Miranda, um, and I am a tech coach for the district. Um, I formerly taught at Freedom Elementary. I taught uh, third, fourth, and fifth grade there, but mostly fourth grade. And this is my fifth year as a tech coach. Um, so I posted something in the uh, the polls there for when I see one of you have used Kami once or twice, you know, there has used it frequently. So that's great. That means um, I can skip the steps on how to add the extension, which takes up some time. Um, and since there's only, there's, we also have another tech coach in here, Janie, um, who's kind of helping me to support uh, this session, but um, Veronica, well, there's two Veronicas. Uh, Veronicas, if you guys want, you can always just uh, shout out and ask me questions at any time. You can also post them in the chat, whatever you prefer. Um, and if you have specific questions or you want me to repeat something or slow down, whatever it is, just let me know. Okay, um, I'm going to get started. Um, and actually real quick, let me just open up the chat. So I have that going. Okay, um, so I already went over who I am, and of course, uh, my computer is moving slow right now. Um, so to go over the agenda for today, um, we're going to uh, really quickly, I'm going to go over a little overview of uh, what is Kami. Um, even though you two might know it already, I'm also recording this so teachers can watch it later. So I'm going to just do a, uh, that piece really quick. Then I'm going to show some examples of Kami. Um, and then I'm going to go uh, spend the bulk of the time um, in creating um, all the different tools that you can use to create assignments with Kami. And then finally, um, some kind of tips and tricks for assigning Kami through Google Classroom and grading it. Um, so to start off, uh, what is Kami? Um, so this is a, they call it a PDF editing tool, but really um, it can work with any type of document. It can be a PDF, it could also be a Google slide, it could be a Google doc, uh, it could be an image file. Um, all of those tools work with Kami and basically the way Kami works is you're kind of writing on top of those. So it'll turn, even if it's a Google slide, it'll turn it into a PDF when it puts it into Kami. Um, the uh, Kami has a ton of creative tools. So the, it has a ton of tools where you can edit or basically work on top of the PDF. Um, you can create drawings, you can add video and voice comments on there. You can highlight, it'll read the text out loud. Um, tons of different features that you guys will experience in just a bit. Um, a nice feature also is that it, it integrates really well with Google Classroom and Google Drive. So you can really easily pull in a, a, a document from your Google Drive and, um, you know, doctor it up with Kami and then um, push it out through Google Classroom. Uh, in order to use Kami, you need the extension. Um, I double checked before I started the session that it has been uh, pushed out to all student and teacher accounts. So you should have the extension already. Um, if you look way up at the top of my screen here, this uh, blue circle with the letter K in it is the extension. Um, and finally, I want to point out that we do have the paid version of Kami. Um, so all the bells and whistles that I'm going to show you are the same bells and whistles that you and your students should have. Um, and as far as I know, Kami will be continued uh, next year as well. So it's not going to end at the end of the school year. Any questions on that before I move on? Okay, I'll move on. Like I said, just shout out if you do have questions. Um, Sorry, it's taking forever for my slides to switch here. Um, real quick, and I know this piece probably won't apply to you, Veronica and Veronica, um, because you've already used it before, but for the people who may be watching this later on, um, the first thing you wanna do to be able to use Kami is check that you have the extension installed. So you wanna either look at the top of your browser here, see if you see this little uh, K, blue circle with a K in it, that means you have it installed. If you don't see it here in your list of extensions, you can always click on this puzzle piece icon, that's number two that I'm showing right here. Um, and then you can look for it in your list here. And if you see it in your list here, you're just gonna use this little push pin to pin it to this toolbar up here. Finally, if you don't see it here or in that puzzle piece icon, you wanna add it from the web store. And that would be going to the, you can just Google the web store and search for Kami there. 
All right, um, I'm going to move past that. Um, so when you, um, if you're going to the web store, um, I have all the instructions here, um, and I'll also post this slide deck um, on the Tech Tank page next to this recording. So if anyone's watching the recording later on, I have the steps here for installing it from the web store. For some reason, it doesn't appear up here. Okay, um, if you're using the extension for the first time, and it seems like Veronica's, um, you guys have used it before, so you shouldn't see these steps. You could try it out right now just to make sure, but if you click on this uh, extension icon up here, it may prompt you to um, go through some sign-in steps. Let me move back over here. Um, and it's going to ask you, you know, if you're a teacher at a K-12 school district, um, it's going to ask about a learning management system. You're going to select Google Classroom um, and then put in your school name and hit finish. You only have to do that once, and that's the very first time you're going to use it. I also, in this slide deck, have a video of those steps here, so you can uh, watch, those video, uh, watch this video if it's your first time signing in with Cami. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me, Veronica and Veronica, because I know you guys have Thank probably you. yeah gone through those already. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you guys some examples of Cami um, in different subject areas, just so you can um, get a little bit of an idea of what Cami can do. Um, or and it sounds like you guys have already played with it a little bit, um, but maybe you'll see things here um, that you didn't know Cami could do. Um, so if these are some science and math examples. So um, you can really easily, like I said, you can put in an image file. So this is a diagram, right? And students could um, use drawing tools and text boxes to label diagrams. Uh, you can use the drawing tool. So for math, that's really nice if they want to write out a formula uh, or an equation for something. And you'll also notice over here, here, right, uh, students and the teacher can add videos there. So if they want to write this out and then use a video explaining their thinking, that's really easily done in Cami. And Cami also has an equations tool in their toolbar. So you can, this is, you know, chemistry, for example, you can easily use the equations toolbar to type out things like that. Moving on, uh, here's a language arts example. So um, here's a passage, right? And um, you can see over on the side here, right? Students can post text or voice comments uh, and video comments. The teachers can also use those same tools. Um, and then you have a bunch of different uh, tools here. For example, the markup tool allows you to highlight, underline things. You can change the color, colors of things. Um, there's a dictionary tool so they can look up words that aren't familiar. Um, and there's also text to speech. So if a student was having trouble reading some of this, they could use that text to speech tool and it will uh, read it out loud for them. And so I think two more examples here quickly. This is a social studies example. So our student is um, using the shapes tool to highlight important information in the text and also using the drawing tool to mark up a map. Um, this next one, Cami actually kind of advertised it as uh, tools for special ed students. Really, I think these are tools for anyone. Um, like they could be helpful to anyone. Um, but the one I'm highlighting here is that you, you have that text to speech tool. Uh, and what you can do is you can actually use the timer to slow down the pace. So it reads it a little bit slower. Um, you, you can use different voices or man or woman's voice, et cetera, um, to read it uh, to you. Um, and then also you have all these commenting tools and lots of color options here that can really help people organize their thoughts. Hey, Miranda, could you yeah. uh, click the present button so it's bigger? Sure, yeah, sorry. Thank you. I just, last time I tried it, for some reason it was taking forever to load. Cool. Um, and actually it's probably, now I'm gonna have to go out of present mode, um, but now we're gonna get into creating with Cami. Um, so the basic process with Cami is you're gonna select your document. Um, usually it's stored in a Google Drive if we're on Chromebooks, but it could be something that's just saved to your desktop on your computer. Um, then you're going to edit it if you want with Cami. Um, so that you're gonna add instructions, comments, if you want, right? Or you could just assign the assignment the way it is, the PDF the way it is to students. Um, and then after you edit it with Cami, you add whatever you want there. You can assign it uh, through Google Classroom to students. 
um, and students can use Kami to annotate that document. And then finally, um, you would review it in Google Classroom. So you could uh, provide feedback also using the tools in Kami. So that's kind of the workflow that we're going to go through right now. Um, I am going to start um, by showing you um, how you would start using Kami. So I went over here to my Google Drive. Um, and I have this PDF here that I took from the Bridges curriculum. Um, and this is the PDF that I want to assign to my students. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that to open it. Um, and then I want to, before I push this PDF out to my students, this activity uh, to my students, I want to add some features onto it using Kami. So maybe I want to explain the directions using a video, using my own words. Maybe I want to highlight a few things, whatever it is. Um, so in order to do that, um, before I assign it in Google Classroom, I'm going to use this open with option here and select annotate with Kami. You will only see this option, the open with annotate with Kami, if you have the extension installed. So you want to make sure that's there. Um, the other way to kind of start off um, creating something for your students with Kami is you can also, here I started in my Google Drive and opened that file. You can also start just at the extension. So you can click on the extension and hopefully it'll open eventually. Um, and then you can say open from Google Drive and then uh, pull that file from your Google Drive. So either way works. You can start in Drive or you can start in Kami. I'm going to go back over here since I already have that open. And I'm going to say open with Kami. I don't know why it's taking so long, I apologize. So uh, the very first thing that I recommend uh, teachers do when they open something with Kami, I've opened this before, so it already has a file name here, um, but sometimes it gives it these really long, funky file names, this long string of letters and numbers. The first thing I recommend doing is just renaming it, and you can do that by double clicking up here where the name of the file is. Uh, so that way it's easier to find later on. Um, the other feature that I wanted to show you before I get started with this, um, and you sometimes it prompts you for this if it's the first time you put the PDF into Kami, um, but is this option, OCR for scanned PDFs. So it sounds fancy, OCR is, stands for Optical Character uh, Recognition. So if this document is a PDF, basically it needs to run a little uh, program uh, to recognize all the text so that if a student wants to use this text to speech tool where it reads it out loud to them, um, it'll recognize all, um, all these letters as words essentially. So if you uh, want uh, students to be able to use that text to speech tool where it reads them out loud, um, you want to run this OCR for scanned PDFs. And you can see down here on the bottom it's saying, okay, I'm running it. Basically it's scanning all this, it's recognizing all these letters as words, and now it tells me it's complete. So now my students would be able to success successfully use that text-to-speech tool. Okay, um, so I'm going to pretend that I want to assign this to my students. So I'm going to use some of these tools here um, to add features. So the first might be, right, I'm going to use the text box tool. I can click up here and I can say, um, please make sure you show your work for each problem or whatever it is. Or I could say, please use the uh, comment or audio tool to explain your thinking, right? I can always add um, extra instructions here. You'll notice when I use the text box tool and I have this box here, I get this menu here. So all those kind of formatting features are there for me to use um, if I wanted to increase text size, etc. And there's also font size here. Um, and you can also change the color really easily here. Um, so that's the text box tool. I'm going to now go into the markup tool. Maybe I want to um, highlight the question for my students here, right? So it's really clear where the question is. So um, the very first one here is the text highlighter. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use that and I'm just going to highlight this and you'll notice now it added that um, highlight there. It's in gray right now. You can change the color. If I click on it here, oops, I get this little toolbar here and I can choose yellow instead, make it stand out a little better, right? So maybe I want to, oops, don't want to do that. Um, maybe what I would like to do is highlight right, the question um, for each problem for my students so it really sticks out for them or stands out, I should say. Let me change this here to yellow. There we go. You guys get the idea. Um, you can use the drawing tool also. And again, all of these tools are available to your students. They have access to the exact same tools. So maybe um, I want to circle something here, right? Use the dollar sign and decimal point. Right? You guys get the idea. I could draw there. The shape tool, um, this was used in that social studies example where they uh, uh, put rectangles around things. So maybe if you wanted to draw some attention to something there in the text, right, you can put a rectangle around it, a little bit of a different effect than that highlighting. Um, shapes tool obviously can also be used for drawing. Um, you know, maybe you have, you want them to put an isosceles triangle on the screen. They can use the triangle tool for that. Um, so the last feature that I want to show you right now is this commenting tool. Um, so the commenting tool, if I click on it, you get these options here. So I could put a text comment, meaning um, I want to add some additional information. Maybe I want to add some additional information about this one here, number one. So if I select my text comment, wherever I click, so I'm going to click right here, it puts a dot. And that dot indicates to the students and to you um, that you have uh, added a comment. So now over here, I can add my comment. Um, right? Don't forget to show your work. Oops. You can change the color of that dot. Like the black one maybe isn't going to be very noticeable to students, but you could change it to yellow if you wanted. Um, the other nice thing about the text tool, or sorry, the commenting, text commenting tool is that it does have a microphone and it can do voice typing. So this is great for, um, you know, the little guys, if they're not proficient typers, they can always just use this, the microphone. Oops, and up here I have to allow my microphone. Don't forget to show your work, everybody, exclamation point. So then I click it again to stop, and now you can see, right, it put uh, my voice to text right there for me. There is this, the voice comment. So this is different than the voice typing, right? Voice typing takes your voice and puts it into text. Uh, the voice comment will actually record an audio file of your voice. So maybe here I want to um, add some voice comments. So I'm going to click on my voice comment tool. I'm going to click where I want that dot to go. And now right when I click, it starts recording. So you have to be careful, uh, right? You're ready to record right when you click. So some brain coral nearby is 11 times as wide as Chloe is long. How wide is the brain coral? And then I click the stop button to stop. And you can see here now it's this nice uh, vo uh, audio file for my students to listen to. And again, your students can also, if they want to explain their thinking on this problem, they could just as easily leave a voice comment. Um, the last one I'm going to show you right now is video comment. So I can choose that, the video comment tool, and this is going to record a video of me explaining my thinking. Um, so I'm just going to click here for the example. And up here it's asking me to allow my camera. I'm going to say allow. And now it's recording me. I'm going to explain about the sea anemone that was three times as wide as Chloe is long, etc. And when I'm done, I hit done. And now there's this nice video file of me uh, um, explaining this. Um, something that's really nice that I've seen other teachers do is they add a video comment at the top of the document to kind of introduce students uh, to the activity, explain, give any extra um, explanation that they want. Um, and it just kind of adds a nice personalized touch, right? Like your teacher is there handing you the assignment. Um, and there is this also, the screen capture, which basically would record, it's like a screencast, right? It records, so if I wanted to explain something about these, um, it would record my screen and me pointing to these items on here. 
Okay, um, any questions about the creative tools in Kami? No, you explained everything very well, thank you. Cool, thanks for the feedback. Okay, um, so these sessions are quick. We have eight minutes left, so now I wanna make sure we have time um, to show you how you're gonna then, if I wanted to send out this assignment to my students through Google Classroom. So um, I'm gonna now go up to, again, I'm still in that document, right? Um, I'm gonna go up to my three lines up here. And then from right in here, there's this option that's supposed to be the Google logo, create assignment. So I'm gonna uh, create this assignment in Google Classroom. So go ahead and click on that. And um, you'll notice it opens up this little assignment window um, that looks very much like the standard Google Classroom assignment window. Um, it has a few kind of different features in it, right? But I could say I could choose multiple classes here if I had if I wanted to assign it to more than one. Um, maybe it only lets me select one, right? I could um, assign it to, I only have one student in this class, but I could assign it, maybe there's just three kids I wanna send this version of the assignment to. I could select those students there. And then this is a nice tool too, feature restrictions. So this toolbar is pretty crazy. It's a lot of stuff in there for the kids. Maybe you know they're only gonna use certain tools or you only want them using certain tools. You could click on uh, feature restrictions and say, you know what, I don't want them to, they don't need the signature tool, right? They're not gonna insert any images. Um, and for this, they don't need the shapes tools. Um, and what that does is it removes them when they go in to annotate this assignment in Kami, it removes those options for the kids. So um, they have fewer things to choose from. And hit okay there. And now I could, right, give it a title, whatever it is, app assignment, uh, instructions. Um, by default, it's make a copy for each student, which is probably most likely what you'd want. And then you have all those other Google Classroom tools, give it a topic or point value. You can change all that here. Um, these checkboxes uh, send Kami instructions to students. I don't find this document very student friendly. I think it's way better to the first time your students use Kami to kind of uh, walk them through uh, while you're sharing your screen. Um, rather than attaching a document that has, it's like a two page long document with instructions. Um, and this is, I just noticed this a couple minutes ago, this add links for mobile devices. I hadn't seen that before. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what that does. Maybe one of you guys have explored that. Um, but my guess is it would make, if a student's on their phone trying to complete this, it might make some easy links for them to open up uh, the assignment. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hit assign. And it's now pushing this assignment out to each one of my students in this Google Classroom here. And now it tells me it's been created. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to that Google Classroom. Let me hit refresh here. And I wanna show you two things here. We have five minutes left, so hopefully I have time to do that. So here's that assignment, right? It says new assignment via Kami math. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then um, it'll show this document here, right? And uh, there'll be a tile for each one of your kids like with a regular Google Classroom assignment. And if you open it, the main thing I wanna show you here is you are not gonna be able to, if students leave a voice or video comment um, in that sidebar, you're not gonna be able to see those um, unless you uh, you can right, open it all the way. But if you wanna see it in this, this window here, you wanna check this box, grade with Kami. Cause you can see here, right? This is my audio, my video file. It's this long link, right? If you want to grade a bunch of student assignments, it's not going to be easy to do. So the fix for that is you just check this box, grade with Kami. And then those um, audio and video files, you can play right within this assignment screen. You know, give it a grade, move on to the next kid. Um, and this box will stay checked for all the assignments, uh, for all student assignments here. Any questions that you guys or things that you guys have run into when trying to grade student assignments with Kami? Okay. Um, 
And then the last thing I wanted to show you here in Google Classroom is, I go back over here. I wanted to show you that um, in the example I just modeled for you guys, I started um, with that document, with that PDF, annotated with Kami, and then pushed it out to Google Classroom. You can always start in Google Classroom. You can hit Create, and then you'll see, if you have the extension installed, you'll see this option, Create a Kami Assignment. Um, and that's basically the same, you're doing the same thing, it's just you're then going to pull the assignment from your Google Drive. Uh, but in this case, you're starting with Google Classroom. Um, I wanted to show you guys some resources. I explained the toolbar here um, in this presentation that I will share with you guys. Um, but I wanted to show you also in this presentation that I'll post in the chat in just a minute. Um, we have two videos um, here for students that you that explains kind of in student friendly terms how they would open a Kami assignment and use the, the toolbar to complete the assignment. And it's in English and thanks to Janie also in Spanish uh, for your students there. Um, and let me grab this shareable link and post it in the Google Meet chat for you guys. Sorry, my computer's moving so slow. I'll copy this link for you guys, and then I'm going to post it down here in the chat of the Google Meet so you guys have access to this presentation and all the resources in there. And any questions? I think you answered all of them for me. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Veronica. Um, you can always reach the tech coaches at this email address here, dtick at pbusd.net. We're uh, happy to support you one on one. Um, I also put in the slide deck that I just posted in the chat this evaluation form. It's really helpful if you guys want to give us, it's super short, with no more than a minute, give us some feedback um, on uh, this presentation and also Tech Tank in general. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Veronica R, do you have any questions for me? No, I think you I, did? yes, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you guys so much. Have a great day. You too, bye-bye. Bye-bye.